All right, so I have this skill table saw with the rack and pinion fence that uh, got popular really recently. It's a great saw. Um, one issue with it is the throat plate here. It's pretty flimsy, just plastic. And obviously there's a wide gap here. So I wanted to make a zero clearance plate. Um, so I took the red one out, I traced it. I made a blank that is just the right size to fit in there. And I did all that before I realized that one, the blade, when it's all the way down, still sits basically even with the height of the table. And two, this housing here sits up significantly higher than even the tabs that the throat plate is supposed to sit on. You can see even in the uh, plastic part, one of the reasons it's so flimsy is because it's got this channel here that has no support, it's very thin, because it's making room to sit on top of this rail here that's just part of the housing for some reason. So when you go to try and uh, put this down on there, it's just no, there's no thickness here. Uh, you'd have to route this down to like an eighth of an inch or something uh, because it's just that thin. So I thought I was done for, didn't think I had a chance to get away from this plastic. But then I thought about this uh, channel in here. So I uh, cut out a piece of 3 8 inch plywood. That's just the right size to fit in there. And then I flipped it over and traced where the actual hole is. Because if you just leave the wood there, it's still about an, inth, an eighth of an inch below the surface. So I flipped it over, scribed a line on it, and then I used a chisel to take the top layer of ply off of this 3 8 inch ply on just that one side. So now that kind of lip fits up on this ledge here. And I got the width pretty much perfect. It's a nice snug friction fit, but then I'm also gonna glue it down so it's not moving around. Pops in there. And then on the other side, it's flush or within, you know, a 64th of an inch or something flush with the surface. So you could uh, fine tune that so it's perfectly flush. But so my plan here is to uh, glue that in there. And then unfortunately, because the blade sticks up so high, you can't completely install it and then raise the blade into it. You're going to have to get the blade going and kind of drop it on top. So I haven't figured out how exactly I'm going to do that and be safe about it yet. I might just hold it by the very ends. Not that I'm recommending it. It's not the safest thing to do, but I'm not sure what other options I have. Okay, I've got my <clears throat> throat plate with the wood attached to it now, glued in there. After I took the last video, I was reading up on it and saw the what probably should have been an obvious suggestion of putting in a smaller sized blade so that you can uh, raise it up. So I don't have any seven and a quarter blades. I use a six and a half uh, circular saw. So I've got my tiny little six and a half inch blade in there. I did also have to remove the riving knife um, to do that. Right now, the riving knife would be right here. And you see these two little cutouts. There's uh, two little cap head Allen key screws that you take out and the, uh, the whole riving knife module just pops right out. Easy to put back in when you're done. Um, now, I'm going to put this on there, start it up, and slowly raise the blade. Um, I meant to put some tape across the top, so I'm going to do that first before I uh, start running it. Okay, I've got my tape across there now, so here we go.
Now obviously that slot's gonna be bigger once I put the 10 inch blade on there and raise it up, but there you go. Zero clearance insert. And the nice thing is that it still uses the same little latches. So uh, it's got those tabs at the back and the latch at the front, so it'll still be secure in there. Now, knowing what I know now, instead of using, you know, three eighths inch ply and cutting it to the shape first and then having to try and peel back a layer um, of the ply to fit the, uh, the lip in here, what I would probably do is I'd take the measurements off of your uh, plate. I Sorry, I meant to before I glued this in there and forgot, but take the measurements off of your plate, run a rabbit on the table saw to get the part that goes inside the ledge right here. So you get the exact right depth and uh, width and everything, and then cut off the strip from the sheet. So that's what I would do it differently if I was uh, doing it again. But looking forward to this, I'm working on a project right now where having uh, that zero clearance insert will help a lot with splintering. All right, we've got the 10 inch blade and riving knife back on there now. So you can see the, the zero clearance tight tolerance is there looking great. Now raising the 10 inch blade up through it, um, it doesn't work with the riving knife on there, right? Uh, because the, there's no blade cutting a slot back here, but really the zero clearance part, you want that up where the blade is cutting, which is pretty much just the front here. It doesn't matter at the back where the riving knife is. So I just use my oscillating tool to uh, extend the, the channel far enough back. I probably could have gone even a little bit further. I can't quite raise my blade all the way, but far enough. Uh, so just open up that channel a little bit, or you could even just cut the back off of this completely, but I like to think it's giving it a little bit more rigidity and strength there, so I'm gonna leave it. But yeah, that's the finished product.